Are you a diabetic who's dependent on insulin? Are you a diabetic who's dependent on pills like uh, metformin or glipizide or glimepride or Genuvia and insulin? Have you tried pills first and now they realize that one pill, two pills, three pills are not working and they've had to give you, along with the pills, they're giving you insulin. Uh, and you're not satisfied because your blood sugars are not looking better. Uh, or maybe you're somebody with uh, diabetes where you're taking pills and you want to be able to fix yourself where diet and exercise hasn't done it for you and you want to be able to regulate your blood sugars on your own again. Or maybe you're taking insulin, maybe you're type one and you are not getting the great results and you want to be able to start to reduce the amount of insulin intake that you are using or even get off of it. My name is Dr. Lonnie Herman and in this video I'm going to share with you about a patient who was born and who's coming to my clinic who's having great results with lowering his blood sugar. He was born in 1957, comes to my uh, office from the uh, northern part of the United States. He's been diabetic for 20 plus years. It was about 20 and a half years or 21 years when I first met him. I first met him April of 2017. His second examination was August 2nd of 2017. This gentleman was diabetic for 21 years. He's been on insulin for four to five of those 21 years. At first he was taking only, when he was first diagnosed over 20 years ago, first he was taking one pill then over time, the doctor who was first caring for him uh, or giving him the meds, then she noticed that the blood sugar was not looking better, gave him a second kind of medicine to use at the same time. Then she noticed that his blood, was, his blood sugar levels were not looking better, so she gave him a third pill to use at the same time. He was taking metformin, I believe it's called Genuvia or Genuva, and Glimepiride all at the same time about close to five years ago and that doctor when she noticed that his a1c was not looking better and his fasting blood glu glucose was not looking better she told him basically i can't help you he found another doctor who has been with him for the past or he's been with this doctor for the past five years that doctor looked at his uh, laboratories of this patient of this male again born in 1957 and he noticed that his A1C was not getting better with the three medicines. He kept him on the three meds and gave him insulin. And he started the insulin, it's close to five years. This patient noticed that, or told me that, he reported to me that he takes 10 to 12 units per day of the fast acting and 30 units of, night, of the uh, nighttime uh, uh, insulin. And he also told me that his, which I'll show you a lab here on the side of me, on the side of the screen here, that even with, again, diabetic for 20 plus years, three different medicines that didn't work and still on those meds, along with 40 to 42 units of insulin on top of those meds in a 24 hour period, his A1C kept going higher. The doctor, the second doctor who was caring for him did not know what to offer him. That's when he started looking online and he found me. And he's, he's, he's tried different things over the years. He reported to me that even with the medication, even with the insulin. He tried over the years, for eight to 10 years, he said, he was doing different kinds of fasts. He was taking different laxatives, thinking that it was gonna cleanse him. He did 30-day cleanses with different kinds of herbs and different types of supplements to pick up in a store, uh, taking some kind of liver fluke type of detoxification or disinfection strategy that he, you know, he tried to follow, that he was hoping would work for him. He got no good results. Now, let's take a look at the first laboratory that he presented me, and again, born in 1957, folks. So this man, for 20 plus years, di diabetic, three pills, and 42 units, 40 to 42 units of insulin, 24 hour period. You'll see this result from June of 2016, 11.9 was his A1C. When he came back, he had a test done after his first protocol, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, his first unique protocol that I developed for him from his first examination in my clinic, his A1C 8.2, on the right track now. On the right track now, folks. Okay, so how do we do it? Listen, there's a lot of information that the doctors uh, your endocrinologist may just not really know. They may not be watching, they may not be, um, they may not be reading some of the reports that are put out by the American Diabetic Association. 
They may not be informed or they may not be paying attention. And even if they paid attention, there's nothing that they have in their toolbox that's going to be able to help them help you get well. And if you're one who believes that there's something that happened inside your body that made your body malfunction, that there's something that you could figure out, pinpoint and safely, uh, effectively um, remove whatever caused it, like a hidden infection and or toxin that's making your body malfunction, then keep listening because that is what I'm presenting to you. There are studies that have proven that the specific parts of the brain that control your pancreas, specific parts of the brain that control the beta cells, nerves that bring signals to your liver, that when and even the where the beta cells are located in your pancreas, that when infections and toxins can get into these tissues and are on these tissues, that they can cause these tissues to malfunction and high blood sugar levels would be recorded. Okay, there's some information I'm not putting into this video today, uh, but you'll hear from me on other videos or when we have our own one-on-one -on -one consultation. Okay, so this man, born in 1957, he's what, 60 years old now, just about 59 or 60 years old, diabetic over 20 years, 11.9 A1C after 20 years, three pills, 42 units a day of insulin for five years and 11.9 A1C, don't you think it should be better than that? He tried different diets, he tried things, and, and it didn't get him where he is now with the, with the A1C decreasing uh, greatly. And actually, his MD who saw the 8.2 said, who is this doctor you're working with, what is he doing? Which is great, in, in surprise, in like, almost like admiration of like, how, wow, okay? I found in this gentleman a specific tissue in his brain, which is the controller of the uh, islet cells, I found of the beta cells that you're familiar with, if you know that term, beta cells, I found scabies, I found strep infection, I found tuberculosis bacteria, I found anesthesia chemicals. Anesthesia chemicals can uh, decrease the function of parts of the brain. They don't leave your brain or body when you wake up out of a surgical procedure or a colonoscopy or a cystoscopy or endoscopy or whatever was done or a tooth removal if they put you to sleep. He had. Uh, Avalox, which is a residue of an antibiotic that was in this part of the brain. He had mold in this part of the brain. He had Bartonella hensile in the specific tissue in the brain that regulates the beta cell function, which is known as cat scratch disease. Whether he got scratched by a cat or not, that Bartonella bacteria in that part of the brain causing it to malfunction. Malathion insecticide in that part of the brain causing that part of the brain to malfunction. Parasitic amoebas, mycoplasma bacteria, staph infection, uh, he had uh, organochlorine pesticide chemicals, cephalexin antibiotic residues, dental cement chemicals from what they fill teeth with, candida albicans, all of these in his part of the brain that regulates the beta cell function. What these scientists found is when they injected inflammatory chemicals, they tested in rodents. They tested the blood sugar levels and found the blood sugar levels were normal. C-peptide, normal. The whole story, they were not diabetic at all, okay? They weren't hyperglycemic. They injected inflammatory substances into the rodents. The specific tissue that I'm talking about that I'll do an exam with you when you come to my clinic, specific tissue in the rodents, in this tissue in the rodent's brain, and they found immediately hyperglycemia, excess blood sugar level. They found a dysfunction from that tissue in the brain to the beta cells. They found when they inflamed that part of the brain that the liver would just keep dumping more blood sugar or storage of sugars into the bloodstream. So we can see higher blood sugar uh, happen. I found in another part of the brain, which I'll tell you here is called the diencephalon. He had scabies infection and staph infection and tetanus bacteria and organophosphate chemicals. This part of the brain is one of the most integral development parts of the brain that started when you were an embryo and is still there in the brain, helping to conduct the ship or conduct control regulation of functions of the body. I also found in other parts of the brain that he had uh, tetanus bacteria, parasitic amoebas in those parts of the brain. I found in his stem cells that make the blood, they're called hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic stem cells are the cells that make your red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. I found scabies infection in there. The stem cells, what happens when the blood is made in, in a factory that's infected? What do you think the blood is gonna be healthy or not so healthy? Probably not so healthy. What do you think is gonna happen? Will the blood carry infection to the body parts like your pancreas, like your beta cells? Yes. 
So we've got to clean that up so the factory is not sending out, producing or sending out, you know, damaged cells or infected cells. The vagus nerve that goes to the liver, the vagus nerve scabies infection. How can the liver function normal when the, liver, when the vagus nerve is uh, infected? It can't work normal. So we don't want the liver to keep dumping uh, the blood sugar storage that the insulin is supposed to store that sugar into the liver. We want the liver to release it when it's cold on, not when it's just being agitated and it just keeps releasing that sugar into the, uh, into the bloodstream. The liver also had uh, mold in it. It also had uh, called wrinkle, R-N-K-L-B, as in boy. It also had mycoplasma bacteria. He had parasitic flukes in his liver, even though he tried fluke, some herbal kind of fluke uh, uh, strategy in the past. I found in his beta cells, he had organochlorine pesticides. That protocol lasted him for two and a half months. That protocol, when he came back again, again, let's look at this blood lab, 11.981C in June of 2016, to 8.2 June of 2017. He has not yet, not yet decreased his insulin uh, uh, units yet, uh, but we're getting there. And how do we know we're getting there? Because the A1C with this gentleman came down. Over 20 years of diabetes, medicines did not help him. If the meds helped him, I don't think he'd be here. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't, but if he was happy that his A1C is, you know, around a 5.7 or 6.0, maybe he'd be happier, but his A1C was getting out of control with all the medications. His next examination, I reinspected those tissues that I did in that first examination with my very unique bioresonance, no electrical equipment, no computerized device. This is all a very intense, hands-on examination. The patient is relaxed, intense for me and my assistant doing this work. I found in that same tissue that I talked about in the beginning that controls the beta cells, I found nickel metal, I found mercury, I found uh, antibiotic residues, I found scabies infection, I found a bacteria called treponema in there, I found candida tropicalis, and I found a bacteria called gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is a bacteria that can get into the body not only by way of a sexually transmitted, you can get it from other ways. So don't think that if I was to examine you and I found that you had a gonorrhea bacteria, that doesn't mean it came as an STD. You can have anything transfer from kissing. You can have anything transfer through intimate relations. You could have maybe, maybe somebody sneezed in the room. Who knows? Maybe you ate, maybe you drank from somebody's glass. Maybe you took a sip of somebody's beer or soda or water glass in a restaurant or as a kid or shared when you were out one night and you took a sip, and how do you know if they had infection in their saliva? You don't know. So, so we can, when we're living on this planet, there's lots of ways that different bacteria, different organisms can get into our body. He had gonorrhea up there. And I'll be able to check him next time to see that this tissue in the brain, again, that controls the beta cells to see that that's clean. And when it's clean, when it's not inflamed, when it's working normally, when it's humming at the speed it's supposed to hum in the brain, it's going to be able to regulate his beta cells. And there are scientists who found that when they could inhibit the inflammation in the specific tissue in the brain, the beta cells were able to, uh, or the blood sugar levels were able to return to normal. His islet cells were the beta cells and amongst other cells in the islet cells of the pancreas. He had scabies infection, just a bit of it. Uh, brain had candida. His brain had salmonella uh, bacteria. The vagus nerve had scabies. The last exam, I told you the vagus nerve had scabies. It still had some scabies on there, and that could be coming out from another tissue that we treated. It's all going to get off of there. It'll all be clean. It'll all be fine. Um, and that's it for his second examination. Uh, so his second protocol is for a period of, I won't see him for 60 days after he uh, has started that protocol. So he's doing that protocol at home and then comes back to my clinic. And so... I'll, uh, I will inform you in, after his next round of just the progress that he's making and where his blood sugar is going. If we were going to see a blood sugar lab at that time, we may not even see that A1C. I've got him running certain hormone tests. There are other hormones in addition to insulin, besides insulin, and it's not just thinking of testosterone or thinking of, um, of estrogen in the body There's and thyroid hormones. There's other hormones that help us regulate our blood sugar levels. And I'm running, as I can discuss with you in a consultation, I'm running with this patient as well as other patients. We're running blood labs on these specific hormones, and there's specific ways to run them, specific research that pointed out of when these hormones may be normal and when they may be out of normal range. So there's a specific strategy I'm using to be able to 
uh, examine these other hormones that I can let you know about when I consult with you. In the future, I'll be reporting more about this gentleman as well as some other lab findings with this gentleman, and I expect him to be able to recover. Again, after 20 plus years, his A1C was going higher with all of the medication, three different pills, and insulin used in a day. And he does not eat garbage. He does not eat, this is not an ice cream, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, uh, type of uh, diet this person follows. He doesn't follow that. And he's tried other holistic alternative types of methods, detoxes and diets in the past, and they just weren't working for him. And now we're seeing the great results. And now he realizes that he's peeking into, he's pinpointing with my work, pinpointing into the tissues that regulate the system and removing the causes of the condition. Like me on my Facebook page, I share information there all the time. And uh, maybe if you're on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram. Subscribe here on my YouTube channel. I put up useful videos here on a pretty much a regular basis. And when you subscribe, if you uh, log in and click this link at the bottom of the screen in the corner to subscribe, log into your YouTube account before you subscribe. And that way you'll get an email when I put up new videos and you'll know exactly when the new videos come up about whatever topic, because my practice, I work with many different chronic, different diseases, patients, to help them rid what's causing their disease. It's not about treating diabetes. I don't treat diabetes. I'm looking to work with the patient and find what's causing the disease and remove it. Speed of recovery varies from patient to patient. Just know that. Not every person has walked in the same shoes as another person with diabetes type one or two. Not every person has had the same kinds of traumas to the body. Not every person has had the same kind of dental work. Not every person has had an STD or not. Not every person has had certain surgeries. Everybody's different. So speed of recovery varies from patient to patient. Okay, that's really important for you to understand. Um, you, uh, uh, something else to let you know here, insurance does not recognize my work. Insurance companies don't uh, they just don't recognize. Doesn't mean that this isn't something is that doesn't work. I'm proving to you it works by showing these labs here. But it's it's that and this gentleman, by the way, he would not. He doesn't want other people to know in his family that he's diabetic. So he just asked me that he wouldn't get up on video with me. So I have to respect that. But I'm showing the labs. And it's just because the insurance company doesn't uh, doesn't recognize it doesn't mean that it's not something valuable. The insurance companies they have a contract with you so and that's all that they're going to cover so you can either stay in that or you can start to invest in yourself invest in yourself to help yourself return to normal function call my clinic for those of you who are looking for answers who want to get involved call my clinic at 954-370-3100 that's 954-370-3100 or send an email to my e to my office assistant i'll put her email address up on this screen as well She'll be happy to answer your questions about when to make appointments, how to make appointments, and how to get involved with me here. She'll discuss costs with you and helping to fly in uh, to the local uh, international airport that's a few minutes from my office. Uh, and people do fly here from other countries as well as other states. I have people as far as Thailand. I've had people come in from New Zealand. People come in from Belgium, Norway, Netherlands. I have people from Canada. Uh, so there's other parts of the world that are flying in here. So if you're somebody who has to fly from another state or another country, people do this. I mean, the majority, more than 90 something percent of my practice is people from out of state and out of the country. Okay, uh, so I look forward to helping you and I'll uh, share more with you soon.